So, I'm Philip Sales. In this interview, uh, I'll be uh, asking Lord Falconer, a uh, cabinet minister in the last government, about how a government minister gets legislative proposals accepted. Lord Falconer, how does a Secretary of State, head of a government department and member of the cabinet, go about getting a proposal for legislation accepted by the government? Well, he's got to try and get his legislative proposal included in the Queen's speech. The Queen's speech begins each session of Parliament, and in the Queen's speech, the Queen sets out what the government's legislative proposals are. The big factor that limits how many bills you can put into a Queen's speech are the amount of legislative time you've got in Parliament. So there is always a wrangle before the Queen's speech is decided in which government departments try to get their bills into the Queen's speech. The ones that generally get into the Queen's speech are those that have political salience. So if the government is, for example, very concerned about law and order, lots of law and order bills will get in. If the government is very concerned about education, then lots of education bills will get in. The first thing you should do to try and get your bills in is to say this is really politically attractive. And if you can convince number 10, the Prime Minister's Department, of that, then you'll have a very good chance of getting it selected in the legislative um, uh, session that's coming, and therefore in the Queen's speech. The other factor is, are you ready with your bill, because if it's not particularly politically salient, then you've got to have a bill that you can promise will only take a certain amount of time. So the way you get your legislative proposals accepted is one, you make them as politically sexy as possible, and secondly, you make sure that they're ready and you can say how much time it's going to take. Where do proposals for legislation come from? They come primarily, the political ones, from the politicians. So very often they will come because the Prime Minister of the day is driving a particular stream in policy. So if it's public service reform, a better health service, a better education service, more efficient police, then those sorts of bills will be produced by the Home Office or the Health Department or the Education Department and they will be they get to the top of the pile because the Prime Minister is pressing that particular political stream at that particular time. The detail of them is put together by the individual departments, but the drive for them and the ideas in them come from the politicians. Is it harder to get a proposal for legislation accepted by the government if you're only a junior minister? You haven't really got much chance of getting a bill accepted if you're a junior minister because it's the politically salient bills, which will tend to come from the Secretary of State, that get selected. The sort of bills you might get if you were a junior minister would be, for example, law reform bills. If you were the minister responsible for the Law Commission in the Lord Chancellor's Department as it was in the Justice Ministry now, if there was a gap at a particular moment, you could say, here, I've got a gap. There's a gap in legislation, for example, because a piece of legislation falls away suddenly. Then those unpolitical bills, the ones that junior ministers are responsible for, are the bills that might slot into a gap that suddenly emerges. But apart from that, you haven't really got much chance. How does the process of political negotiation with colleagues in government work? Well, ultimately, the Legislative Committee, which is now called something else, uh, decides what goes into the Queen's speech. Uh, generally, if there are rows, then that committee decides, but that committee will normally get a very strong steer from Number 10 and the Cabinet Office as to what the leadership of the government wants in the Queen's speech. So, ultimately, the way you get your bills into Parliament is by persuading the Prime Minister they should be there. Now, there is something called Legislation Committee, you've just referred to it, or L Committee, which is now called the Parliamentary Business and Legislation Committee. How does that work? The role of that committee is, in theory, to determine which bills have priority. The two things it is looking at is political salience and is the bill ready. As far as political salience is concerned, normally the members of the committee will agree, but if there is continuing disagreements, then effectively the Prime Minister will resolve those. But L Committee will also be responsible for saying, if your bill is not an absolute priority, is your bill ready? And by ready, that means you've got not just a draft of a bill, which you can present to Parliament, but you can convince the members of L Committee that you've really thought it through and you won't be vulnerable to amendments to be made both by the government and forced upon you by the opposition. Because bills unravel, not because the politics are objectionable, but because as Parliament looks at these bills, they realise this doesn't work, that's impractical, that bit doesn't go with that bit. And L Committee's job, as well as determining priorities, is also to say, look, have you really got this sorted out? Who sits on that committee? Uh, it's chaired by, uh, the Deputy, was chaired by the Deputy Prime Minister under the last government, I suspect it's still chaired by the Deputy Prime Minister, and it has on it the business managers in each House, Commons and Lords, and that means the Leader of the House of Commons, the Chief Whip in the House of Commons, the Leader of the House of Lords, and the Chief Whip 
in the House of Lords, and it may have a Cabinet Office Minister on it as well. It will not have departmental ministers on it, because de it'll have the Attorney General on it as well, because departmental ministers will be wanting to push their particular bills. So it is the, it is the, it is the non-departmental ministers who sit in it. And how much detail does uh, L Committee go into about the content of the legislation? Uh, the L Committee will be interested to, to satisfy itself of two things. One, that the bill, if it is a highly political bill, delivers the political intention. So it will look at the main principles of the bill and see if it matches the, what's trying to be achieved. In relation to are you ready, does it work, the, 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 the committee itself won't go into much detail, but it will be served by... Um, civil servants in the cabinet office who will spend a lot of time really probing individual departments to know how well or how badly a bill is prepared. And you can tell generally how well or badly a bill is prepared at the committee because you can, when you have a discussion about it, you can see, because the committee will summon the relevant minister to cross-examine him about what's going on and the extent to which he has got an answer for the questions that you are putting will be indicative not generally of how good or bad he is or she is, but how well prepared the bill is. You've told us about the uh, parliamentary managers. What do they do as part of the parliamentary process? Their role is to tell us, the departmental ministers, how long a bill will take and whether you will get it through. So, for example, if you're doing a constitutional bill, they'd be able to say, well, that issue is so hot both in the Commons and the Lords, that will take you much, much longer than you think. And if you want this particular bill, then you've got to knock out other particular bills. Their role is to, is to manage the production of business in both the Commons and the Lords, and their role on L Committee is to give us a prediction as to what will happen. And as a minister, how do you keep them happy and supportive for your legislative proposal? The way you keep them, they are happiest when you are producing popular, well-prepared bills that will do exactly what you say they will in terms of the preparation. They're at their most unhappy. They don't care if people don't like the bill as long as you kn they know you can get it through. For example, if you've got a huge majority in the Commons, there's no problem. But in the Lords, even though it may be unpopular, say, with the Conservatives, if the Liberal Democrats and Labour will come together and support it, as they would in a previous generation, then they'll be happy with that. But they really want you to be accurate in what you say will happen politically and ready so that it won't unravel with lots of debate going on about how good or badly it's drafted. What steps does a government department take to prepare the ground for introducing a legislative proposal? Well, it, the, the government department in drafting, suppose it's a bill about something to do with the police, they would talk to the police, they would try to find out from the police what were the right answers were, they would talk to the Crown Prosecution Service, they would talk to any group that they think has got a legitimate interest in it. They would speak to professionals, they would speak to experts, and they would then try to put together the bill as well drafted and as well thought out in terms of how it's going to affect real life as possible. They would look to the politicians, that's the business managers and their own minister, to sort out the politics of it. Because if you produce a bill in Parliament that Parliament won't wear, for example, the 90-day detention period that the Labour government produced last time, then you have a political disaster because you couldn't even get it through the Commons. So they look to the politicians, the government, to sort out the political groundwork for it. How involved will a minister be in working up a detailed set of proposals for legislation? The good minister will have said, this is what I want the bill to achieve in detail. You should assume that the minister is not a lawyer and therefore can't be sure all the time whether or not the specific, the specific drafts of the proposals actually do what he says. But if he or she is good, he should be able to read the bill through and say, it does do all of the things that I want, subject to sort of legal lawyer's tricks, and therefore I'm happy. And if it isn't doing what he wants or she wants, then he'd have to in instruct his department to make changes. Uh, he would also... Uh, have to be able to say you've missed out something in relation to this and he would also be able to have to check that there's no uh, howler in the bill. Very often you'll introduce things that, that turn out to be absolutely disastrous and you don't spot that until you get to Parliament and the, the, the Minister's got to support if there's spotted any political howlers uh, and he's also got to be able to deal with the inevitable things that emerge during the drafting of a bill. If you're doing the drafting of a bill, for example, if you're drafting a, a, a criminal justice bill and you want, for example, to increase sentencing in relation to murder, which is what we did in one bill, you suddenly discover 
in the middle of that, that you're increasing all of the sentences in relation to everything because murder sentencing drags everything up. So a question arose in the middle of that bill as to how do you keep the rest of sentencing down when you haven't got any more money for prisons. And that's a, that's a sort of ongoing issue that the minister's got to deal with. To what extent will a minister have meetings with his bill team? And to what extent does he just do, deal with matters on the papers? Uh, he will meet his bill team from time to time. Ministers vary from time to time, but minister, ministers will generally meet the bill team on a regular basis because the bill team will be telling them, look, you've got a problem here. We've messed this up a bit. We need to change it. And he'll be being told all the time, look, we're having difficulty in the laws with this particular bit. You've got to change that. How do you get political clearance for any amendments introduced when a bill is making its way through Parliament? All amendments have to be approved by L committee unless they're of such a trivial nature as to not really matter. And that's a very few amendments. You have to go back to L committee because L committee is responsible for ensuring you get your legislative programme in a particular year. If there are significant amendments that you're agreeing to, then they want to check that's not going to take too much time and they want to check that you're not destroying the political purpose by the amendments you're agreeing to. And that may have to be done with very little time. Yeah, a very little time, uh, very little warning. Uh, it's quite diff I mean, you, you'll often not do it at a meeting, you'll do it by a, 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 the Cabinet Office, which is the Secretariat for the L Committee, will send a note to all the ministers on it and get them to say yes or not to object. It's a, very, it's a difficult process. Can you give us an example of a policy and legislative proposal you introduced where you felt it went well? Yes, I think the Legal Services Bill, which is a very complicated bill, went well because broadly we thought the stuff out beforehand. There were some amendments to it. There was quite a lot of opposition to it. But by and large, we started off with a set of proposals and we ended up with those proposals because we there had been a lot of building time. Legislative pro proposals that went badly as legislation, though I think ended up as brilliant legislation, was a constitutional a reform act in 2000 and which it's the constitutional reform act 2005 but it started in 2003 that was the bill to change the role of the lord chancellor create the supreme court appoint a judicial appointments commission and we started that at absolute breakneck speed we were able to get through l committee because it had such a political priority because the prime minister said he wanted to do it uh, it was not remotely ready it took 18 months to get through both houses of parliament it was a bad uh, process because it was effectively amendments were being made and we were thinking it through as it was going through Parliament, which I would say was a bad process because the good process is to think it through beforehand, put it to Parliament, have a few amendments, but by and large get at the end what you started with. And uh, it was Parliament that really improved that bill, which might on one view be said to be a good thing, but in terms of an, a, a process, it was a nightmare. In our next video, Lord Falconer will be explaining a minister's role in taking a bill through Parliament.